Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This week is show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Kite Man, Hell Yeah, Season 1, Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we finally get to meet the CEO of Villigans, and it's Helen. I don't... I should have looked this up ahead of time whether or not she's a character from the comics or not. After a quick Google search, I didn't see anything, so she might be a character uh, made specifically for the show. Uh, voiced by Judith Light, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, like, we find out, I mean, it seems like they're setting up, I mean, pretty implicitly saying, like, Villigan's supposed to be, like, I mean, I'm sure any large corporation, but it definitely feels to be, meant to be Amazon in a lot of way, where it's like, oh, we kind of do this and we do that, but, like, our main thing is... Data. It kind of reminds me of, uh, which is also, I was about to say, uh, uh, Vought in The Boys, which is supposed to be an also like a, uh, a um, Amazon parallel, because it's like, right, we're not in a superhero business, we're in the pharmaceutical business. It's kind of a similar thing where it's like, no, we do this and we do all that, but it's like, no, we're in the data business, which I'm like, well, to be fair, that could be a lot of corporations. I'm sure Amazon in particular, considering everything they do, and I even love Kite Man being like, ooh, makes you kind of feel a certain way about that one hour free shipping and stuff like that. It's like, well, yeah, it's supposed to be a direct shot at Amazon in that capacity, but still, uh, especially because like Amazon kind of gets a lot of flack, deservedly so, for just a lot of the work conditions and like how they're able to make that happen, like fast deliveries and stuff. So there's there's that angle to it. But um, other than that, let's kind of break the episode down. I was kind of getting way ahead of myself. Uh, but we have... I love that it's only been like a day since the last episode because Kite Man even says like, oh, don't worry, babe. You're only going to find so much like because she's been deep diving and trying to find her mom ever since she found out her mom is actually alive. And it's like, oh, you, it's only been a day yet. She looks like a hot mess. And so they decided to go on the mission because somehow I don't know who Bane got in contact with, but he found out that their mom, I, I wasn't expecting her to be in the pit. I also completely forgot that the pit was owned by the Shadow, the League of Shadows. I was like, did we know that last? Because like the last time we went to the pit was like season two when Ivy and Harley were there. Wasn't that, that was like in the middle of season two, I want to say. That was like what episode, wasn't it like at the end of episode six, they got thrown into the pit and then episode seven, because didn't they go to court or something like that and got thrown into the pit? I think episode seven was them in the pit and escaping, if I remember correctly. Someone can correct me in the comments down below. But I didn't remember that being, a, I remember it being connected to Bane. I didn't remember it being a League of Shadows place, but you know, maybe they mentioned that, and it, obviously it's been a while since season two, so maybe I'm just misremembering. But I love, like, no one wanted to go, and it's like, yeah, it's only Kite Man and, um, it's only Kite Man and Golden Glider that wants to go, because even Bane, even though he wants to be reunited with his love, which I love he made that point where it's like, here's Lisa so distraught over her mom not not being able to find her mom and here's Bane being like why are you acting like you're the only one to suffer I didn't have an opportunity to consummate with the love of my life it's like yeah because Lisa wants to hear that conversation right now actually no one wanted to hear that conversation. everyone's like ugh um but yeah because Bane was reluctant to go it's like right you got out of the pit of course you're not interested in going back but they inadvertently end up going. I even love kind of, it's like, yeah, I'll follow uh, Golden Glider into any hell. He's like, yeah, we went to Hardy's last week. I was like, Jesus, shots fired at Hardy's. Uh, but yeah, they take a plane there. Um, and I love the reason why they got kicked off the flight. It's because Bane was trying to stop a kid from drinking our toilet. I was like, whose kid is this? And he got vilified for that. I'm like, why? He was just trying to stop this kid. Like, we never found out whose kid that was. I mean, for all we know, the kid could have been on a plane by himself, but still. I mean, then it doesn't help that Kite Man, you know, because he's got his new weapons. Which does seem interesting, because even, I think it was, um... Was it Queen of Fables who pointed out? I was like, you're ordering stuff from the same corporation that tried to kill you and destroy your business? He was like, yeah, but you can't beat that, like, one-hour shipping or whatever. So, he got some of his weapons. It's so interesting to think about. It's like, well, it makes sense why Kite Man would have gadgets, considering, like, you are a pseudo... Is he actually a bat? He's a Batman villain. I mean, I would assume, considering he's here in Gotham, but it's like... You are like, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Like, you're like the complete opposite of Batman in every capacity. You have no powers, you're not, you know, but your superpower is just how optimistic you are. Whereas, like, Batman's pessimistic and this dark creature, you're this bumbling ball of light that is 
of a villain, you know? So it's just, it's just interesting when you think about it a lot. Just with the gadgets, just made me think of, obviously, Batman's, like, the number one hero I think about when I think about, oh, someone decked out in gadgets and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, ripped a hole in the plane, and they ended up getting to boot. Luckily, two of you can fly, so that worked out perfectly. But yeah, like before, well, I'll, since I'm already on this track, I'll circle back to the bar and everything. But, you know, they make their way down the pit. And I love that Bane's like, okay, you got to do this, 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 and this. And he dodges everything. And then Kite Man and Glider just kind of like casually dodge everything while floating down. And he's like, well, I'll go fuck myself then. And so it turns out the pit has become the manufacturing place. Not manufacturing place, but like the shipping place for all the, for Villigans. And yeah, all the people that are locked up there are being mind controlled. Apparently, the League of Shadows sold everything to Villigans. Villigans must have gave them a pretty penny. Because I guess it's like maybe they felt like the pit wasn't needed anymore. It's like because it is so old tradition, it's like maybe the new League was like, oh, we don't need it. Just like we found out the Court of Owls is just kind of like a horny um, orgy situation. You know, We haven't seen what the League of Shadows is like in this continuity, if I'm not mistaken. So who knows what they're like in this version. But it's like, yeah, maybe they're like, well, we got a pretty big payday. From Villigans, considering like how like well how well oiled a machine and powerful that organization is, they probably like probably like well like went well above you know asking price or something. So you probably can't turn that down. Who knows if the league is strapped for cash or not? Considering like you are a secret organization hiding in the shadows, it probably costs a pretty penny to keep that afloat. So. I felt bad for everyone locked up in a pit because Bane, Glider, and Kite Man, who actually never killed anyone. He was knocking people out, but only Glider and Bane were actually killing people. And so it's kind of sad because three of the people he had to kill, the last three, in fact, were his friends. So, But it's like, yeah, they're on the mind control. Who knows if that mind control could have been broken? Does seem like it can be, but they didn't have time to wait for it to kind of break. They need to get Glider's mom out of here. And, uh, I mean, to be fair, it's also because Kite Man's gadget screwed up and ended up sending everyone into, like, attack mode. So, it's like he's kind of the reason why a lot of those people died. But it wasn't anyone necessarily important. The only important people were the friends of Bane, but he kind of got over that pretty quickly when he was killing them. And he's like, oh, this will probably hurt me. Zombie, this will hurt me more than it hurts you. Probably. And proceeded to st step on and squash that second dude's, like, genitals. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's hurting him way more than hurting you, bro. And luckily, they ended up rescuing um, Rebecca, uh, Lisa's uh, mom, and ended up proceeding to uh, escape because of Bane, which is, like, pretty impressive not only did you, like, you jump, you made your way in, you broke out, you made your way back in, and you broke out again, which he even says, like, yo, gives himself the second tally. But it's like, yo, while also carrying three people, because someone was carrying Rebecca, and he was carrying the both of Kite Man and Lisa just to get out. So it's like, that's pretty impressive. And luckily, despite being banned from Villigan's air, they were able to hitch a ride back without problems. We do hear near the end of the episode, uh, Bane is calling customer service for Villigan. So I'm curious to see if he's going to win that battle. Most likely, I'm like 99% sure he won't. Because who was it? Was it the pasta maker? Wasn't that season three? Yeah, the whole pasta maker thing. He was like on, in, like on the phone for customer service for so damn long for that whole thing but i mean it worked out for him because he ended up you know being trained by like what he and he, it was in italy last season got not last season was that season four or was that season three I actually no i think that was I, yeah i think that was season four the whole no the pasta maker got brought up in season three i don't remember that carried over into season four or not i don't remember um but like he went to Italy and learned how to make pasta because I I think I think it's season four he was having a like customer service battle with the pasta makers and then ended up tra training under a pasta maker so it was like if I remember correctly which I I could be so so that's why I'm like it kind of worked out for him in that front so I'm curious to see if he'll have a similar trajectory probably not because I'm you know he has a job at. Um, Noonan, so I don't see them kind of moving away from that. So that 
I'm curious to see if that ends up becoming anything or not. I forgot to talk about it, but I also love the reason why uh, Captain Cold didn't come along. It's because he's been banned. Uh, he's on the no-fly list because he was there at January 6th. Because, not because he was at January 6th, because of January 6th. And Kite Man's like, ugh. And I was like, ugh. But it's like, yeah, in 2014, he punched somebody. I think it might have been a TSA agent or something like that. I don't remember. He punched someone. It's like, okay, that's what... Okay, okay, that... Okay. So I was like, oh. I, I, love, the, I love the joke because it's just kind of like, you're like, oh... Oh, that Captain Cold's one? Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> He's just a violent dude. He's just not that kind of violent dude. Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, I'm curious to see what his reaction is now that their mom is back. Because Glider's super happy to have her mom back to the point her mom wakes up. It's like, oh my God, Lisa, I never thought I'd see you again. She's like, mom, we'll be, never be separated again. And all Lisa's, I mean, all Rebecca's response is, fuck, which, understandable. She, like, it wasn't just like, who knows how long she was in the pit but she's probably been living her best life, I'm assuming, considering, like, oh, she didn't have to have any responsibilities. And because Re Lisa doesn't know how much their mom disliked being a mom. She was just kind of like, eh, you know. Bane heard those comments, but probably didn't care too much because all he cares about is being in love with her. Um, I'm curious how Captain Cole feels about it. Like, would he even care? Knowing that, like, oh, not only is her mom alive and she's free and she's... We'll, we'll probably find out next episode, but I'm curious to see what his reaction to all this is going to be. Will he... Because it seems like he's a lot more... Well, I'm assuming Lisa told him everything last episode, so he has to probably... I, I think that's so funny. I keep always calling her, but, like, she's the only person I'm calling by her real name instead of her, like, her superhero, super villain like, Elias. Uh, because, like, yeah, I've never called Kite Man by his name, um, Chuck, you know, but I'm, I, I don't call, uh, Captain Cold, uh, Leonard, I just call only, I'm only, I'm slipping up, and for whatever reason, Lisa comes to mind first before Glider, you know, so I don't know why I'm doing that, but that's why I constantly keep going back and forth between saying Golden Glider or Lisa, but I just don't think Cold, Captain Cold is going to be as attached as... It seems so fundamental for whatever reason for, well, you know, it's understandable because then her glider blamed herself, believing she killed both her parents. It's like, well, you only killed one. So, um, once again, timey-wimey, we don't know if in the original timeline she did, but if it's always like this Ouroboros thing of you end up going back in time and Bane and Kite Man end up, you know, helping you not kill your mom, but only end up killing your dad. Which doesn't seem too heartbroken about because all she's focusing on is like, oh, my dad's dead. Oh, but my mom's alive. Definitely, that's all she cares about. So, so it's going to be interesting to find out what Rebecca was up to this whole time, what her best life was. I mean, they even said, like, even um, Helen said it, like, right, if you're in the pit, you've got to have done something really, really bad. So what did she do to warrant her? Not just being like, she didn't, she didn't end up in Arkham. She didn't end up at Blackgate. She didn't end up in a regular prison. I'm sure there are very few regular prisons. And the only prisons you really know about in Gotham are like the big time villain ones. But it's like, yeah, she didn't end up there. She ended up in the pit, which was owned by the League. Because even Helen was like, oh yeah, all the prisoners here are all the prisoners that were already here when I bought the place, which included her. So, like I said, she's been there for a hot minute. God knows how long. I mean, like I said, the last time we were here, to my knowledge, and someone can correct me, was like season two of Harley Quinn. Was Lisa... Even though we didn't see her, was she there in that time frame? Or has she been in a pit sometime in between then and now? Obviously, you know, that might be more the time frame when she landed here. So what was she doing, like, the majority of the rest of her life, you know? So, either way. So there's that side of things. And then back in the bar, we find out that Malice has a boyfriend named uh, Ju uh, Jeremy. That he was so evil that they would rather, they, they tried to, he died, went to hell, but he was so evil, hell sent him back. Um, so that's interesting, and Malice is all about it, trying to hide the fact is that she works here. Uh, which, interesting enough, her boyfriend uh, was voiced by, uh, uh, Jeremy was voiced by Ben Aldrich. And I was looking, I saw the name, I was like, is that who I think it is? And it's like, yeah, uh, DC Connection wise, he played Thomas Wayne in the TV show uh, Pennyworth. So I was like, oh, that's neat. Another person uh, in a similar boat is uh, Richard Kind, who voices the health inspector. And um, if you don't know Richard Kind, he played the mayor. 
Which is funny because he was on the show Spin City, which dealt with a mayor, if I remember correctly. It's been a hot minute since I saw Spin City. But I think that was the first thing I ever saw Richard Kind in was Spin City. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, he played like the mayor for a little bit. Not for a little bit, quite a bit of Gotham he played the mayor. So it's like, oh, just funny DC connections in that regard. Uh, which I love that health inspector where it's like, oh yeah, the worst timing. And they uh, like... Uh, Noonan tried to play him off, but he was like, nope, I'm the one person you can't pay off. And there's just all these, like, violations all around. Um, and then finally, like, what was it? Later on, Jeremy showed up and killed him because Malice created this lie of, like, oh, my God, these guys are actors. This is all a performance and yada, yada, yada. Oh, I'm playing like I was, um, like, I work at this place. And I, what was that line Jeremy said? He was like, ooh, touch my balls and tell me how... Uh, Brexit uh, benefits minorities. So I was like, Jesus, what the fuck? Uh, but we find, well, Jeremy ended up killing the health inspector, but it turns out he's actually immortal. And it's like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I'm a city worker in Gotham. You think this is the first time someone tried to kill me? I'm like, how the fuck are you immortal? Did you take a trip into the Lazarus? No, because like, the Lazarus bit doesn't, well, unless you're Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul, but it's like, now that's immortality versus invulnerability. And it's like, how did you get immortal? Because we never answered that question. So I'm like, I'm curious about that. Like, how did you gain your immortality? It's not important just knowing that he is. It's like, yeah, city worker, all the great benefits and the pension. But it's like, I'll never get to see any of that because I'll live forever. But it's like, yeah, government jobs are forever. And it's like, well, you can live forever. So I just love that whole bit. But uh, Jeremy is so damn evil because at first, Alice, Malice tried to make it seem like, okay, everyone's actors to performers. And then it turned into a, oh, this is a Westworld thing. And then he proceeded to do what, you know, people do when they get disgusting in Westworld. You start killing and being indiscriminate because you're like, oh, yeah, like this is, what was he saying? Like it's for the death and sexual gratification or some shit like that, I think is what he was saying. He was just killing people nonchalantly. And even Malice was like, why is this not turning me on? Because even um, even the Queen of Fables was like, holy shit, you might. I mean, she's like, I never expected there'd be someone too evil even for me. She ended up losing her body because of him, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And so I love, and he ended up knocking, like, quote unquote, killing Joe. Uh, no, Mo. And Joe's like, oh my God, he killed my... I keep flipping the names. He even said, I think it's Joe. Joe's the one that's alive. It's like, oh my God, he killed my little, my baby brother. It's like, he's finally acknowledging, well, he's only now acknowledging uh, Moe's death, but only in the confines of, oh my God, he ripped his head off, even though he's long since been dead. His jaw literally fell off this episode. But, I mean, Joe was in denial. He kind of has no choice but to accept it now, but it's even in his acceptance, he was still in denial in the grand scheme of things. I love Noonan being like, yo, like, you stepped to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. He's like, I'm gonna kill you with this one finger. He's like, oh, really do it. Pulled out a shotgun and blasted him. He's like, oh, right, right, right. So evil hell didn't want you. So you've kind of got the whole, like, uh, immortal thing going on. But, um, Malice stopped him. Because it's like, yeah, you've come to care about these people. And Jeremy dumps her because he's like, oh, I thought you were rich. And like, oh, you're working in this place? Gross. Glad you're understanding, babe. And bounces. And it's like, wow, she's actually got feelings now. And it's like, yeah, she's come to like this place. And so she is going to take care of it. She's like, because she has nothing else. She's like, well, I lost my boyfriend. I lost everything. So like Noonan's all she kind of has right now. So she does her thing to kind of make the place as good as can be. And it involved putting the Queen of Fables new body being uh, she's now replacing uh, Mo, which I'm like, oh, that's it. She's like, oh, I got a dick now. He's like, and Joe's like, hey, that's me and my brother's dick there. So I was like, that's going to be interesting. I was wondering if that was going to be a running gag because like, it's like, is she going to lose body parts like every episode? And it's like, don't think she she didn't lose her body last episode. Uh, to be fair, we didn't really check in on at the bar and everything last episode. But it's like, yeah, she got her Frankenstein esque body she put together. Her Frankenstein's monster-esque body she put together uh, in episode three and lost that. And now she has uh, 
So that's going to be interesting dynamic her now with. And I wonder will she ever will they ever settle on a body? Not unless she's able to bring her own body back, but I think it's like, no, nah, we're gonna keep this gag going because she's never gonna find the right body, or she's gonna end up on the right body, but it's just gonna be messed up in some capacity. I don't know. There's always there's gonna have to be some gimmick to whatever body she does ultimately land on. It's gonna be one she doesn't like and has no choice to take because she's like enchanted to the body, so it's forever stuck to she's forever stuck to it. I don't know. But yeah, uh, everything works out because Noonan doesn't get shut down and get to D minus and we just keep it pushing. It's like, well, yeah, we're at the bottom, bottom barrel, but who cares? This is the place we know and the place we love. And so that's kind of where everything ends up by the end of the episode. I'm really curious to ultimately see where next episode takes us. I'd assume it mainly would revolve around Rebecca and finding out more about her and what she's up to and now that she's back like Lisa's gonna have a rude awakening when she realizes like her mom had no interest in her and I'm sure she's probably gonna lie her way through it or maybe she'll actually be truthful or maybe it's gonna be the last couple minutes of the episodes where she'll be truthful like I said, it's gonna be interesting to see whether Captain Cold pops up too but it's gonna be interesting to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.